Hello, and welcome to my kitchen. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that I've been wearing the Abbott Freestyle Libre 2 Continuous Glucose Monitor um, to help understand better the relationship between stress, what I eat, when I eat, how much I eat, sleep, and my blood glucose levels. And I've mentioned before, I'm not being paid um, by Abbott to do this. I'm not being endorsed. I'm not part of a study. I've actually paid for my own supplies. I'm just doing this to learn for myself and hopefully to help you um, learn more about, you know, how I eat and what I eat affects my blood sugar levels. Um, anyways, I'm into week four now, uh, and you know, it, it continues to amaze me what I'm learning from this. And so I've taken notes again so that I don't forget things. Um, so, uh, uh, the first thing that was really kind of an, an accidental experiment, uh, is one afternoon, uh, I had a potato based salad. And this is something that Dr. McDougall, if you don't know who he is, um, you should you know, read some of his books, uh, The Starch Solution and Ultimate Weight Loss Guide, et cetera. Um, it really endorses uh, you know, a 50-50 plate of 50 non-starchy vegetables, 50% um, com composed of starchy vegetables, fruit, legumes, grains, et cetera. Anyways, I had a starch heavy, meaning it's still 50-50, but it was potatoes. Um, and he really is a proponent of eating potatoes as a uh, means of uh, sati increasing satiety and facilitating weight loss. Anyways, one day I had my lunch that was finished about 1.50 p.m. Um, and the, the potato in it was mm, almost a full large size potato. Um, anyways, I was not hungry again the rest of the day. And so I thought, well, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to experiment again. Uh, the uh, the concept of intermittent fasting with the dinner skipped. So I did that and of course, you know, my blood sugar was stable because uh, what I've noticed, the trend is that my blood sugar um, creeps up during the day. So the latter part of the day, late afternoon, evening, you know, and I wasn't really sure whether that has had to do with insulin resistance, what I was eating, my cortisol, stress, etc. So anyways, this day I had my um, last meal by, finished by two, didn't have a meal and my blood sugar was stable throughout the rest of the day, the evening, the morning, not surprisingly. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I've learned firsthand just with this one meal that there is something about potatoes in particular that really do hold you and satisfy you. Uh, and not only just in terms of your hunger level, but your blood sugar level. So that's something I'm going to be incorporating um, frequently going forward. You know, potatoes in my diet, the meal was tasty and um, satisfied. So anyways, um, I decided that accidental experiment, I would do something different and I wanted to see, you know, uh, Chef AJ, uh, you may know her. Um, she does a lot of uh, YouTube videos, Ultimate Weight Loss Summit, et cetera. She works at True North. She's a, a, a chef um, and as inherent in her name. Anyway, she's advocates for vegetables for breakfast, which, you know, sometimes I do entirely vegetables for breakfast. A lot of times I do a 50-50 plate of vegetables, non-starchy vegetables and something else for breakfast. Anyways, I thought, you know what, let me see, because I had tried a few times in the past to follow Dr. Kaliova's recommendations about skipping the um, evening meal, and I was hungry and I was distracted and I, I didn't really like it, even though my blood sugar was stable and yes, you know, the benefits were there. Um, I just said, you know, let me do a hack. There's a, you know, fasting mimicking diet for people that do intermittent fasting and um, skip the morning meal. So let me see if I can do kind of a, a hack by eating just non-starchy vegetables at dinner. And you know what? The same thing. So I had a big plate of broccoli for, for a dinner one day. And my blood sugar level throughout the evening, night, next morning, were pretty much the same as they had been when I had skipped a meal entirely for the dinner meal. So, uh, you know, I, again, I don't know how often I'll do this, but I was not hungry. I was relatively satisfied, you know, at least physically. Sure, you know, I felt like something was missing because I'm not used to eating that way, but it's something I could do in a sustainable fashion going forward. You know, at least sometimes, maybe most of the time, maybe all the time, I don't know. But the information is there and my blood sugar was stable, more stable than it had been and did not have that afternoon um, increase, the evening increase uh, that day or the next day. So it seemed to carry through. Um, anyways, I, I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, you know, looking again, so I've been trying this time, this, this week, uh, 
looking at my afternoon blood sugar levels and you know what can I do to uh, modulate those a little bit better because that seems to be for me whether I'm eating or not when my blood sugar will rise if it rises at all uh, and uh, you know a prime example of that is one day this past weekend I was doing my parents taxes and I guess I I didn't feel particularly stressed until the conversation I had to have with my mother after about finances, et cetera. And then I was, and I, you know, I frequently check my blood sugar uh, because it's so easy to do. Um, anyways, my blood glucose was going up and I hadn't eaten anything. And so to me, that means cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone and cortisol does increase our blood glucose levels. So, um, you know, my blood glucose was starting to rise in the afternoon, even though I hadn't eaten. I ate a regular, you know, my low fat, whole food plant-based, sugar oil, flour, alcohol, salt-free, 50-50 plate in the evening when I was hungry and my blood sugar spiked. I mean, quickly went up, thankfully did not go back down, but I was eating um, as I had been prior to that day with good blood glucose um, recordings and this time it went up. So the stress that I had with the resultant cortisol magnified my blood sugar response to food. Um, you know, that's what I believed. So I wanted to test it to see, you know, was that true or somehow was it something in what I ate that I wasn't aware was spiking my blood sugar. So the next day I tried, when I wasn't stressed, wasn't dealing with finances or taxes, um, essentially repeated that meal again. And so my blood sugar in the afternoon was as it had been most of the days prior to the, the tax day. Um, and I ate the same meal and I did not have that spike that I had the day before. So that tells me that at least for me, my body is very responsive to stress and does produce cortisol uh, with the inherent, uh, the, the um, associated rise in blood sugar, even without eating and then after eating a, um, a more pronounced rise. So I did learn that. I, you, you know, for me, what this means is I, I thought I was aware of my stress levels, thought I was aware of things to do to minimize stress. Um, but since I know that my blood sugar naturally rises in the afternoon anyways, I've changed my meditation practice timing a little bit. And so I try to do it now more um, mid afternoon before I see that 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 increase and to try to help mitigate any stress that I might have collected throughout the day that I am not even aware of. So for me, that's something that I, I've modified based upon my blood glucose readings. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. You know, overall, I wanna say that in looking at my, my blood sugar levels, the feedback that I'm getting from this is enabling me to make modifications in what I'm eating, what I'm eating, stress reduction, sleep, yoga, meditation, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, this has been a, a very helpful tool in helping me to get instant feedback and to help me do what I need to do to stabilize my blood sugar throughout the day. Um, you know, as I said before, my belief is that if you have any extra weight, any extra fat, then you are by definition insulin resistant, at least to some point. And uh, with the, the modifications I've been making and um, seeing my blood sugars being able to be stabilized throughout the day, I've gotten the, the, the bonus through, I've, since I've started this, I've lost about two or three pounds. And that for me is phenomenal. Uh, you know, I like a lot of other people gained weight about 10 pounds, maybe even 12 pounds over COVID that were unintentional. And, you know, they kind of just crept up insidiously. I didn't even know what I was doing probably in retrospect, you know, I had more time at home. And so I was baking more, experimenting more with, you know, the, the vegan, um, desserts, which is something I really, I enjoy baking. Um, but for me, you know, I've had to come to realize that the maple syrup that I was adding to these really was a trigger and a, particularly a combination of the, the sugar, um, salt and fat and the fat was being using nut butters for me is, you know, really highly palatable and triggered me to eat more. And so I'm sure I was overeating. So elimination of these things right now, I'm you know, following a low fat food plan for the past few weeks um, and uh, have eliminated salt. And the, the only sweet, and, and I don't really even use this, it just happens to be kind of an incidental, maybe there'll be, you know, a quarter of a date in a dressing I'm making, but I, I really am trying to stay away from that. And interestingly, even though I, I say I'm trying to stay away, what I've found for me for dates, and some people like to eat them plain, I don't really like dates, 
and you know I appreciate the ability of the date to counteract some acidity in dressings um, but if I can taste the date I don't really like it and so I'm hoping going forward that the dates are not a trigger for me because yes they do have sweetness but it's not a sweetness that I like so you know maybe dates are something I'm going to be able to incorporate um, into my diet later on but I don't know. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not even gonna worry about that. Right for right now, I know that elimination of sweet, salty, fatty has markedly decreased cravings for me, um, has stabilized my blood sugar, has enabled me to lose some weight, um, and I feel freer. I don't feel drawn to food. I don't have food thoughts. My food is tasty, but it's not compelling and. The freedom itself, even if it weren't for the weight loss, and you know, this is, I would not have been somebody that would have said this before because I was always focused on, you know, what the number on the scale said. Um, the freedom has been remarkable. And for that alone, it is, is worth following this plan. So, um, probably, you know what, I wanna say one more thing. I did try one other thing. So, you know, I um, do it, practice intermittent fasting most days. I exercise in the morning in a fasted state, and then I will eat my first meal of the day, my 50-50 meal, after I exercise. I wanted to see if delaying that meal would have any impact in my blood glucose readings. And my belief prior had been that the exercise was facilitating entry of um, glucose from the foods I was eating into my cells, and that's why I was not having a spike in the morning. Um, and I wanted to see if I put a pause between my exercise and my first meal, if that would still hold true, which would mean it may be a, another mechanism um, that my, for, you know, to, as an explanation for why my blood sugar is lower in the morning than the afternoon. Anyways, uh, so I did an experiment in which I did my usual fasted workout and then waited an hour. And then after the hour ate and I looked at my blood sugar readings throughout that whole time and they were identical to when I have my first meal right after I exercise. So at least for me, at this point in my journey, you know, whether it has to do with decreasing insulin resistance or whether it has to do with the fact that my cortisol is lower in the morning, I know that there's a rise in the morning and then it, it levels off and you know, maybe my cortisol is higher in the afternoon because of stress and lower in the morning. I don't know the reason, I just know for me that I don't need to eat right away after I've, um, you know, had my morning workout in order for my blood sugars to be relatively stable uh, as a result of that meal. So, you know, I think I've learned a lot of good things. Hopefully these will help you. Uh, you know, and the, and the keys really, I think for me are, you know, the composition of what you eat, the potatoes, high, uh, complex carbohydrates are amazing at stabilizing blood sugars. Um, when you eat um, heavier in the first part of the day, breakfast and lunch, and then a lighter, even if it's vegetables for dinner or skipping dinner, really lower uh, your blood sugar in the afternoon. And uh, you know, again, that blood glucose variability and anytime we can lower our blood glucose overall is good. So, and, and then, you know, stress reduction, which is, is so important. Um, anyways, and so I think that's it. And uh, you know, as again, you may know, I'm, I'm wearing this actually longer than the four weeks uh, because, you know, one of the devices fell out and then Abbott replaced it. So. Um, you know, I'll have a couple more of these videos at least to see what I come up with and, and uh, see what I learn again to hopefully help you in your journey. Um, but for now, I guess that's it. Um, and until next time, happy eat. Can't even say it. Happy eating. Take care.